Hello, I'm Rashi Goel and I'm pursuing BLLB from University of Petroleum in Energy Studies Dehradun. And currently I'm a legal intern at Lexis and Company. So in today's video I'll be talking about gift. It's a part 2 video. You can check my previous video on which I have talked about what is gift and what are the essentials that are required for a valid gift. So uh, let's talk about today's video. As I told you, it's a part two video. So in this video, I'll be talking about modes of making a gift, provisions relating to onerous gift, and suspension or revocation of gifts. Now let's start with what are the modes of making a gift. Section 123 of Transfer of Property Act 1882 deals with the formalities that are necessary for the completion of a gift. The gift is enforceable by law only when these formalities are observed. This section lays down two modes for affecting a gift depending upon the nature of the property. For the gift of immovable property, registration is necessary. And the for gift for movable property, it may be transferred by the delivery of possession. So in case of immovable property registration of transfer is necessary irrespective of the value of the property registration of a document including gift deed implies that the transaction in writing signed by the executant that is donor attested by two competent person and duly stamped before the registration formalities are officially completed Let's discuss it with one case law. In case of Gomti Bai versus Mattu Lal, it was held by the Supreme Court that, in the absence of written instrument which is executed by the donor, by the uh, uh, attestation by the two witnesses, registration of the instrument, and the acceptance thereof by the donee, the gift of immovable property is incomplete. the doctrine of part performance is not applicable to gifts therefore all the conditions must be complied with a donee who takes possession of of the land under unregistered gift deed cannot defend his possession from being evicted so there are two requirements for registration first is registration of gift of immovable property is must however the gift is not suspended till registration a gift may be registered and made enforceable by law even after the death of the donor provided that the essential elements of the gift are all present and second is in case of essential elements of a valid gift are not present then the registration shall not validate the gift It has been observed by the court under the provisions of Transfer of Property Act section 123 there is no requirement for delivery of possession in case of immovable property now let's move to movable property in case of movable properties it may be completed by the delivery of possession registration in such cases is optional the gift of movable property affected by the delivery of possession is valid irrespective of the valuation of the property the mode of delivering the property depends on the nature of the property the only thing that is necessary are the transfer of title and possession in favor of the donee anything which the parties agree to consider as delivery may be done to deliver the goods or which has the effect of putting the property in the possession of the transferee may be considered as a delivery next uh, i'll be discussing about the provisions relating to onerous gift onerous gift refers to the gift that are the liability rather than an asset the word onerous means burdened thus where the liabilities on the property exceeds the benefit of such property it is known as onerous property when the gift of such property is made it is known as onerous gift that is non beneficial gift the donee has a right to reject such gift section 127 of the act 
provides that if a single gift consisting of several properties, one of which is an onerous property, is made to a person, then that person does not have the liberty to reject the onerous property and accept the other property. This rule is based upon a principle which says that one who accepts the benefit of the transaction must also accept the burden of it. Thus, when two properties, one is onerous and other is prosperous, are given in a gift to a donee in the same transaction, the donee is put under the duty to elect. He may accept the gift together with the onerous property or reject it totally. If he elect to accept the beneficial part of the gift, he is bound to accept the other one which is burdensome. However, an essential element of this section is a single transfer. Both the onerous and prosperous property must be transferred in one single transaction. Only then they require the obligations to be accepted or rejected in a joint manner. And in case of onerous gift is made to a minor and such donee accepts the gift, he retains the right to repudiate the gift on attaining the age of majority. He may accept or reject the gift on attaining the majority and the donor cannot reclaim the gift unless the donor reject it on becoming a major. And now let's move to the last subtopic that is suspension or revocation of gifts. Section 126 of the Act provides the legal provisions which must be followed in case of a conditional gift. The donor may make a gift subject to certain conditions of it, which is being uh, suspended or revoked and these conditions must adhere to the provisions of Section 126 of the Act. This section lays down two modes of revocation of gifts and a gift may also be revoked on these grounds. First is revocation of mutual agreement, where the donor and the donee mutually agree that the gift shall be suspended or revoked upon the happening of an event not dependent on the will of the donor, which is called gift subject to the conditions which are laid down by mutual agreement. It must contain uh, certain essentials, that is, the conditions must be expressly laid down. The condition must be part of the same transaction. It may be laid down either in the gift deed or in a separate document which is being the part of the same transaction. The condition upon which a gift is to be revoked must not depend solely on the will of the donor. Such condition must be valid under the provisions of the law given for conditional transfer. For example, a condition totally prohibiting the alienation of the property is void under Section 10 of the Transfer of Property Act. The condition must be mutually agreed upon by the donor and the donee. And the last is gift revocable at the will of the donor is void even if such condition is mutually agreed upon. Second is revocation by the rescission of the contract. Gift is a transferor. It is thus preceded by the contract of such transfer. This contract may either be expressed or implied. If preceding contract is rescinded, then there is no question of subsequent transfer to take place. Thus, Section 126 of the Act says that a gift can be revoked on any grounds on which its contract may be rescinded. For example, Section 19 of Indian Contract Act makes a contract voidable at the option of the parties whose consent has been obtained forcefully by coercion, undue influence, misappropriation or by fraud. Thus, if a gift is not made voluntarily, that is, the consent of the donor is obtained by fraud, misappropriation, undue influence or by force, the gift may be rescinded by the donor. The option of such revocation lies with the donor and cannot be transferred. But the legal heirs of the donor may sue for the revocation of such contract after the death of the donor. 
the limitation for revoking a gift on the grounds of fraud misappropriation etc is 3 years from the date of which such facts come to the knowledge of the plaintiff that is donor the right to revoke gift on the uh, coercion force or undue influence then it is lost when the ret- donor ratifies the gift either expressly or by his conduct thank you everyone for watching my video i hope you like it and if you did please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family and don't forget to let me know your feedback in the comment section stay home stay safe stay healthy